thank you so much for clicking on this video for joining me on another orchid chores diary i appreciate your company so much because once again you are gonna help me stay focused throughout what i need to be doing and what i want to document and hopefully edit it in such a way that it is entertaining maybe some nuggets of information as well helpful <laughs> if nothing else but also you can see i have another little thing going on right here yes it's the first time i'm going to be working with dual cameras and i am a little bit hesitant and nervous because i want to make sure that i get the shots right so we are going to be practicing today as well as i would like to take my videography to another level when possible by having a second camera running so i can get some other angles in for you so oh, i'm a bit nervous about all of this because that holder there is very very stable but the cell phones these days are also quite heavy so yes now this whole thing building up too is the fact that i'm going to try and document and film me putting my tolumnia baskets up onto that west trellis which is normally not a big deal but whoo, <laughs> i've got a gorgeous dendrobium tortilla blooming to the right i have to clear the shelf down here with my beautiful zygopetalum that is still in bloom on one spike yeah it, it's it's a little bit like yikes new thing and let's see if it works but before i get into that i have to slow my heart rate down because we need to address the catacetinae they are growing gorgeous roots but if you saw the video of when i was potting them up in this suspended method they're a little bit lower in the pot and i now need to raise them up to what i would like them to have as a final height so that the roots will continue to grow down into the media before filling it up i don't need a high heart rate with that i need very very steady hands so we'll get to the tolumnias after we've done the catacetinae and then just settle down after that part <laughs> find some other things that we need to get done today and then we will end up with the tolumnias on the west trellis and hopefully everything goes well not a single basket dropped the footage will be of some relevance <laughs> so now you understand why i'm so grateful that you're here because you're going to keep me focused so anyway now let's go and start with the catacetinae okay i'm going to get into fred clark yara now i want to raise the bulbs up because of the slight shriveling the whole support here it's all loose and I should be able to raise it up, let's say, without too much difficulty. My only thing being I need to protect the roots. It's a fiddle and I don't want to touch the roots in future. You can see I've used some toilet paper roll to stop it from leaning up against the pot so I can get an upright growth habit as soon as possible. But I'm not ready to water yet. I could leave it in this position and then just fill up around with Lekka and be done with it. But the spikes will then have problems coming out in the future. They will quetch themselves up against the rim of the pot. Otherwise, I wouldn't bother with it. It's just the spikes of these Fred Clark Yaras. They grow at the base of the pseudobulbs and not come out at the middle. <laughs> So it's going to be a bit precarious. I'm probably going to be very, very quiet because I need to concentrate and I'm hoping that everything will stay in focus. Wish me luck. You see how much it has lost in the pseudobulb there. Desiccated a little bit, which is fine. I'm not concerned. That's normal. A little check here to see how it's going to cope without the velcro i don't want that velcro in there now just because it is so slippery now and it's going to make my life so much more difficult that's why i'm not using it this time around and i'm not garroting the bulb in such a way now because it's kind of desiccated it'll be okay if it desiccates further then that's okay as well. I just need it to be in position because we're not far off filling up the pot with Lekko. We're not that far off. 
but not today. We're not filling up with lacquer today. Now I have to be super happy with the position of it as is. I need to make sure I like what I'm seeing and keep it that way and put it back on the shelf. I'm not feeling it with the growth being right here. So I'm gonna turn it a little bit, center it a bit more. That's better, I like that much better. Simply because there's still space for another growth or two in the back here if it wants to do that in the future. But this one has plenty of space. All right, it's going back on the shelf and we'll look at the Jack of Diamonds. Check that one out. All right, what do we have here? Not as many roots on this one, but it also has to come up a smidge. Yeah, same situation. Where is the start of my wire? And this is why I don't do this on a yearly basis. Honestly, it can't be, it can't be bothered. It's so much more convenient to leave them potted up all year round as for as long as possible. <laughs> and I suppose the previous three years was plenty. Get rid of the Velcro here. Same circumstances here because the spikes come out at the base, so we need to raise her up enough to avoid that. And I don't want the end of this wire thing to be pushing into my bulb. I'm just gonna turn it around. Oh boy. Sorry about my hand, if that's blocking the view. Catacetinae roots are just amazing, but let me tell you, despite the fact that they look so much like of substance, etc., they are delicate. They, the velamen is paper, paper thin. There is nothing to protect that root system when it's in this stage. And that is why the watering is always such an issue, and you have to wait for everything to mature so that the root doesn't just rot because despite looking like this enormous and chubby and you know like anything you would think like a cattleya root it's not it is the most delicate root that I've ever ever come across also when I clean up lecker how much of the layman sticks to the lecker because it's paper paper thin now of course when I start watering the bulb in the back is going to plump up again. But by that time, I'll be taking this wire off and I'm gonna be so happy in being able to do so. Okay, that's on pretty tight. And I like the position of it much better than the other one. Phew! <laughs> Not just warm because it's a sunny day, but warm because it was a bit of a fiddle. Okay, back on the shelf it goes. <laughs> Phew! I cannot tell you how relieved I am. Now, I have a whole batch of lecker on a tray drying out because I want to be ready with dry lecker to fill up because obviously even while filling up with dry lecker, we are still not ready to water. This is where they're living for the time being. They're inside. Lots of light, growths facing away from the direction of light because they're in training to get into the pot and up against the next bulb, not going anywhere else but moving towards the center. That's the plan here. And you can see it is working, they're bending towards the light, trying to keep the bulbs in the pot for as long as possible and as snug as possible. So until I don't have to fill up around with lecker, these guys stay here. I don't move them. <laughs> It's around this time of day now that I have to move Stan the man. He's usually on the west side up until the sun starts coming in through this corner. That's gonna be far too toasty for him. He needs to now go on the east side into a corner where the shade has already started. So gotta do that. This corner is where he stays until I go to bed and then I put him back on the west side because, you know, lots of shade throughout the morning. He usually should be living, hang on a second, let me lay, raise you up. You should be living up here on those hooks. I have yet to determine how long the sun stays there in the morning. That is why he's still on a stand and not hung up because 
I still have to figure out if the morning sun is here too long or not. I haven't had the courage to do that yet. <laughs> Seems a little bit safer for the time being just to move him back and forth. Okay, next thing, you can see how the shade is now here in the corner. There's sun right here. The position of the orchids behind on that rack are positioned in such a way that those that can take a bit of direct sun, they are on this corner. And at this point in time, it's the perfect time to raise the curtain and allow a little bit more of the sun into this space. And now they can be without the protective curtain around them for the rest of the day until I put the curtain down again at night at the same time that I move Stan back into his position on the west side. So Dendrobium nobili here can take a lot of sun. Renantanda sunrise can take a lot of sun. Down here is Darwinara can take a lot of sun. And all the way down there is the Tibicinis can take a lot of sun. So these are all positioned in such a way that if there is still sun shining on this corner, then it's perfectly fine. On the top, I've got the Thomsoniana, can take a lot of sun, and the Ancelia Africanas have had a lot of sun and they are now in shade. Next thing I want to do today is take off this spike cakey hybrid on my Dendrobium berry odor. I had one like this last year on this orchid as well and I left it on the orchid to see if it would grow a new growth while still being sustained by the mother plant and still attached to the cane because there are no leaves. It's not gonna photosynthesize. So I left it on, but it just depleted, deteriorated and died. But while I still have viable roots, what we're going to do this year is a little bit different. We're gonna put it up into like an ICU setup to see if that will trigger a new growth. And if it doesn't, then, well, at least we've tried two different ways. But trying to leave it on and knowing that last year I did not get any kind of new growth at the base, well, that's just gonna result in the same thing. So we gotta try something different. I don't want to break the spike because if there's something going to grow at the base, it's gonna need some energy. So you're just trying to twist it off gently, carefully. And I already removed any exterior leaves down here so that the roots did not grow into the leaf crevices, making life much more difficult. And there we have it. You see, I still have root tip on there and I want to take advantage of it. Now, there's no guarantee that this is going to work either. But I know that the other option didn't work. So we've got some plain RO water. I don't know if you can see that, I hope beautiful sunny day. Anyway, I've got a lot of plain RO water at the base and I'm just going to let those roots absorb. I have been misting them throughout the time that they've been growing and well, now it's up to them. Like I said, don't know if this is going to work, but the other way last year didn't work either. So we'll let that water then just evaporate and keep it nice and humid down there. Done. Let's check the wound here. If the wound is really, really bad, then we need to apply some cinnamon. Hang on a second. Right there. Take off that sheath and have a better look-see. No, there's no need for cinnamon right here. It's a dry day. That's going to dry up and callus over all by itself. That's okay. All right, my Dendrobium berryoda is all nice and tidy again. I do not have any new growths coming. That bothers me, I know. I mean, it's gonna happen eventually, but I was hoping in Dendrobium berryoda styli that even though she was still in bloom, new growths would start, but not a light. So we wait. I have her facing this way because there's more light coming on this side. I really would like to see if I can't get some growth on the back end here, which was the dividing factor of all the divisions I took last year in 2021. Would be nice to get these canes filled in. If not, eventually I'm probably just gonna go in and remove all the leafless canes just to tidy her up. But for now, I'm trying to see if this is gonna grow me some new growth and that's why this is facing towards the higher light source. Okay, little prototype cakey, hybrid thing, whatever. It's going inside with the others. And now we wait. 
Now it's time to water these guys one more time. Neo Phoenicia Rainbow Forest. Sorry, let's correct that. Vanda Rainbow Forest. This is now just plain RO water. Early morning, they had a lot of fertilizer. All their sprays in the morning were fertilizer. And when I say all, I mean I've already sprayed them twice with 160 parts per million of fertilizer and then I already sprayed them once with just plain RO water while they were in the shade. Now that the sun has come over here, it's a little bit too hot to keep them here. This is Neostylus Lucneri Blue. Also plain RO water, this is what I consider my flush. It's a little bit too toasty now. Seeing this on a Neostylus, oh, always makes me happy. New root growth and a little bit of extension happening in the back here. And I, I say I'm so happy about it because anything stylus in my climate just doesn't like to grow roots nicely and for an extended period of time. So when this happens, I'm sorry, there's a car on idle in the background, but when this happens, yeah, that always makes me happy. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate your efforts. And this is where they live, well, this is where the Neostylus lives because uh, it's a much lower basket and I would keep bonking my head, which has already happened several times and that is painful. So it goes over here, sneak peek at my monster mount and we will see a video on that. And the others are up here where I don't hit my head. <laughs> the shortest basket to the right, guaranteed can't hit that. This one's tucked enough far away. I won't be hitting that. So my blooming alley is accessible without me hurting my head. <laughs> Quick update on my Ancelia Africana spikes. So that's two out of four. The third one you can see tucked back in there. And I found a fourth one coming uh, right there. So I've got four spikes on Ancelia Africana and well, including ants, which I will be trying to blow off right now because you can see some buds are blasting, but that could be temperature related. I don't want it to be aphid related, so ants will come off. And look who's come outside. In the meantime, Epidendrum or Coilostylus parkinsoniana. So the plan here is to hang up the tolumias, obviously, but we're also checking the direction of growth, trying to match that somehow with you know, light influence, etc. We're still doing light training, even though the telumnias are hanging up against the trellis and get them as high as possible. Something like that. That'll work for now. We've got a new growth facing this way. Main light source is coming from that side. Even though the curtain is up today because it's an overcast day, when that curtain is down, there will be much more light coming from this west side. So. That is the plan, and if I need to, and if I can, I will reach up and hang it up even higher. But let's start like this first. I am also considering the direction of growth, how I want it to grow, and where I need to be spraying so that I don't affect that growth. Even though they are in high light and there's a lot of, lot of breeze here, I can assure you that I don't want any new growths to fail. And for that reason, I'm trying to see when I just go with my sprayer, where's the best positioning for them. Another thing I have to consider is strong, strong winds. And I don't want my telumnias bashing up against each other. So you can see that this one is much, much bigger. It's probably going to have to move down a notch. I don't mind if they were to be dripping on each other. That's not the problem because if I use a big one, an established one like this, it is not going to fail any new growth in case there is water dripping down from one on top of the other. That's okay. This time of year, these coming months, we'll be fine with that. So you can't see that basket just yet, but that is the method I'm going by. You can see the hooks are staggered. So the basket underneath is also offset to a degree. So we'll try and pair this one up here with a skinnier one so that they both have space. There's the new growth. And it shall be growing either this way or that way. That's fine. There's plenty of room in that basket. I'm just trying to explain my thought process. Okay, so here we have another somewhat bushier one, which can be considered more established. And if the two larger ones can fit next to each other without the leaves bashing on each other when it comes to high wind, 
then they can live together like that. I know you can't see it. I'll show you just now. <laughs> then uh, at least when that spike goes, they've got plenty of room. Here I have a really nicely established one, but it always seems to need more water because you can see how the leaves look desiccated. But because this one right there is so skinny, I'm gonna bring this one up here. Also because the curtain itself right here is mostly shade. If the wind were to blow the curtain anyway, it goes this way back and sways back and forth left to right. But this side here has a lot less light than this side right here. So I'm taking the ones that are also a little bit like dodgy that need more water or less light and I'm positioning them the way they are for a reason. Same with this one here. Beautiful two new growths coming. I want them coming into the basket this way. So this will be the back of the orchid facing most of the light. And yes, I might repeat myself, but bear with me, I'm new to this dual camera thing. I know it looks all very amateurish, but I have to start somewhere with expanding my videography horizons. So that will work for now. They are staggered. Okay, we have a few more to go. My major focus here is to position them that if it gets really, really windy, which it does around these parts, that they don't bash up and hurt themselves against the trellis, including light, including how I missed them. All of that stuff is being taken into consideration when I position them back onto this trellis. Okay, bloom interlude. I hope anyway that this is in focus. Here is Tulumnia Red Sun. Ninja clip about this one is already posted, so if you want to have a closer look at her and understand and hear more things about her, the ninja clip will be linked in the description. Obviously, very receptive to sun, so this one needs to be a little bit more protected, and a lower level is always a good idea. Even though she's not in line with the other one, that's okay for now. This is also not as highlight a position on this wall as up here. Woo, I'm all shook up. <laughs> we did it. Ugh, my heart. <laughs> Watching everything. I was just hoping that whatever I filmed there was visible. I couldn't see much, but let's see. Like I said, there's only one way to find out and we gotta start somewhere. But there's something else I wanted to show you just before I sign off. Look at this. Dendrobium unicum says, hello. Isn't that amazing? Oh my goodness, this orchid. That color is just astounding. But I'm going to sign off here. If you've made it all the way through to the end of the video, thank you so very, very much. Hope that you have yourselves a beautiful day, but I will ask you on one condition, that you do stay safe, please, and take care. Bye. Bye.